So, Om Aram everyone. So, welcome to today's Sunday's lecture. Um, so, as you know, that uh, respected communities are actually in Italy. They are presenting a, they have presented a paper, and in fact, today they are in Rimini, uh, conducting a flexor meditation camp uh, in Italy. So, on the, because they are not here, I'm just taking this lecture. So, the topic today is the power of prayers and Namutkanam. So before we start, my humble obeisance to Acharya Mahashamanji for this spiritual guidance. Now before we start, Namutthanam is actually a prayer, Prathna. So Prathna, so essentially if you look at the Sanskrit uh, beginning, what does Prathna mean? To ask, to request. So when you're actually begging someone, so like, that's like a beggar who is begging. But this is slightly different here. You have someone who is much more superior than you. A much uh, sort of like a divine being and then you're actually honestly asking so many times we have asked for things to like we want to pass our exams if our health is not good so we are earnestly asking for something so that's essentially what the prapna uh, means and also if you look at it uh, uh, in also some of the other languages prashna so that's a western uh, language if you look at uh, some of the Lithuanian prasyati to ask and beg. So pratna, even in some of the other uh, uh, languages, has got a similar root. That and the, and the essence of pratna is to sort of ask to to, to beg in, in, in earnest. Now namutthanam is actually a sutra. How many of you here do know namutthanam? You know, very nice. Uh, young, uh, why don't you come up here and recite for us, both of you? Why don't you please come? Come, come here. So let's fold our hands and let's recite. What's your name? Rajat. Rajat. And yours? Rajat. And yours? Mudita. Mudita. Very nice. Okay, so it will be nice to first listen to them. Namutana. Fold your hands. So, before we start Namutunam, let's look at it, who actually uh, uh, created this, this prayer. And before we start, let's just take a scenario that let's imagine that uh, Narendra Modi is actually walking through the door here, Donald Trump is actually going to be walking through the door here, and they're actually going to be sitting right in front of us. Can you imagine the scenario here? There will be security guards around here, making sure that everything is proper. Uh, if Narendra Modi or Trump or Theresa May was sitting actually next to you, you would actually be feeling, let me take a selfie. And then you would actually take that photograph and it will be immortalized at your home. Like, look, I actually had a, a photograph with someone such so uh, eminent. So that's like uh, leaders, political leaders. Same thing could have happened with uh, your superstars, movie stars, uh, whoever you adore. Now, let's take the same scenario in heavens, Devlok. We, according to the Jain philosophy, we all know that there are different types of Devlok. First Devlok, second Devlok, third Devlok. So even if you put an angel who is in their first Devlok, they've got superior powers than us. And then you go to second Devlok, third Devlok, and sort of say up to the 16th Devlok. Now, right if you go right to the top, then who is the head of all the Devs? And then there's Indra Maharaj. So he is like, and they, they, they also have got a hierarchy in, in Devlok. So there could be some Devs who are in charge of security, other Devs in charge of some other, other matters. And, and the person who is, the Dev who is in charge of everyone is the Indra Maharaj. So you can imagine the clout which the Indra Maharaj has. Uh, so 
the most superior, all powerful. There is no other dev who can actually surpass their qualities. Now imagine the Indra Maharaj is sitting on his throne, and suddenly the throne shakes. People will start wondering. In Devlok, there is no earthquakes. There is no natural calamities. So one thing is for sure: it's not an earthquake which has caused his uh, throne to shake. He is then wondering that there is no other dev who has got the power to shake my throne. Because I'm all powerful, there is not a, any junior dev or nothing in Devlok can shake my throne. Then what has actually caused my throne to shake? And then he uses his Avdiknan, the power of clairvoyance, and saying that what, what is it that is actually making my throne shake? And then Indra Maharaj realizes, ah, in earth, there is actually birth of a Tirthankar, a future Tirthankar, a, a birth of some, a, a god who is going to actually uh, take Diksha, uh, destroy the Karmas, and going to become a Tirthankar. And this pious sword is actually making my throne shake. Immediately, Indra Maharaj gets up and what is believed in the scriptures is he gets up, bows down with his left knee up and immediately starts reciting Namutthanam Sutra. Can you imagine the other devs and devis? They'll start wondering, who is this Indra Maharaj going down to? We all go down to Indra Maharaj in, in Devlok and now he is someone who is so superior. So imagine if Donald Trump or Narendra Modi comes down and bows down to you. People around you will start wondering, who are you that actually people like Narendra Modi and Donald Trump and Theresa May actually bow down to you? Who, who are you? So it's that kind of, can you imagine that scenario? And then people realize that yes, Indra Maharaj, no matter how powerful he is, he's actually getting up off his throne and bowing down to Tirthankar Bhagwan and eulogizing the 35 attributes of Arihant Bhagwan. So this Namutranam is essentially captures all the virtues of the Tirthankar Bhagwan and Indra Maharaj is going to be reciting some of the, uh, the, the, these virtues and the qualities of the Arihant Bhagwan. I'll just skip this. Now, garden. So, let's look at the essence of Namutthanam. If you actually went into a garden, so, and if you just walked around, it, you do not have to do any extra effort, but you'll just smell the fragrance of the flowers. If you went to Kew Gardens, just beautiful flowers, and the flowers are just giving out their essence. Automatically. You do not have to actually go near the flowers and let me start smelling. The, the essence, the fragrance is all around. Similarly, every word of Namutthanam is filled with profound essence. Just a single word, Namutthanam. And we just look at the just beginning of the prayer, Namutthanam has got profound essence. <clears throat> now, obviously we don't have too many people here, but uh, let's imagine, let's do a hypothetical uh, ex uh, uh, experiment right now. Let's imagine that either there is a, a, a couple here or, 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 or sort of someone superior and junior. Now let's just imagine there is a young couple standing right in front of us. And will we all agree that say the husband feels that my wife has actually got superior qualities then the husband will definitely agree that yes okay obviously i've got some good qualities but my wife has also got superior qualities than i have if that's the case will the husband readily actually bow down to the wife there'll be some form of hesitation there's always that some kind of hesitation that i'm actually a bit elder or i'm a male or i, I or if there's a child here Will the parents actually bow down to the children? The children might have superior qualities than the, the parents. So inherently, or even if you look at the Rajasthani or the Marwadi sects, or even if you went to Kolkata, the general custom is, if anyone is elder, you will come and actually bow down to their feet. That's a generally uh, uh, Indian custom. But it doesn't actually happen the other way around. Someone, someone uh, uh, superior or elder bowing down to someone young. So what really sort of stops us or inhibits us is the ego. The ego suddenly then stops us saying, no, I'm actually slightly, I'm a male or I'm a, I'm a female or whatever it is, but some ego, or I'm, this is my child. Our ego would actually stop us from buying, buying down. And then if someone bows down through force, that's not real bowing down. So you could have a dictator, dictatorial leadership and saying, you all are going to be my subjects, you all are going to bow down to me. Is that real coming out from the heart? No. So that essentially bowing down does not happen. Even if you look at the rivers, the rivers start from Himalayas and all these big mountains here. They go to all these different places. Eventually, they merge with the mighty ocean, the ocean. And essentially what happens is when they have to uh, come down, they actually have to come downhill. They, they start upstream, but they all have to come downstream and merge with the ocean. So even the, if you look at nature, the river has to bow down before it has, merges with the big ocean. So the essence is actually bowing down. Even the rivers might start up, up high in the islands, but ocean is every, obviously mightier than the rivers. The ocean has, has, you know, it's a huge mighty ocean. So there is, even in nature you can see that one has to bow down. <coughs> Namut Thunam. How does it begin? Namo. It does not mean Narendra Modi because that's another <laughs> name for Namo. So here it's not Namo. It's actually 
Namo means bowing down. And it starts with humility, Vinay. If you look at Uttaradi and Sutra, there's a whole chapter devoted to Vinay. That humility. How do you have humility to our, our gurus? How do you have our, uh, humility to, to our Tirthankas? And, and it's of one of the most profound essence of humility. Even in school, if the children are going to school, they need humility towards the teachers for them to imbibe any knowledge. You cannot have any arrogance that, yes, I'm actually superior than my teachers. So it starts with Vinay, and once when you let go of Vinay, Vinay leads to Vijay. So if you have Vinay, then Vijay means victory. So humility leads to victory. More. Now, the beauty of some of our prayers is that there's not a single de de uh, uh, definition of, of, of the words. Just like in English, you've got synonyms, each word would have got different meanings or different connotations. So, more. So what does more essentially stand for? More. More means like rag. I, I've actually got attachment to some certain things. Maya, mamatwa. I've actually got a lot of uh, uh, intense obsession with certain things. And you actually want to get rid of this uh, uh, attention. Let's look at, look at this, another very classic example. Naukar mantra. Ad aksar in a, in a chair. Naukar mantra na. 68 letters. If you look at Namo Aryantanam, it starts with Namo Aryantanam, Namo Siddhanam. It always starts with Namo. Namo Aryantanam, Namo Siddhanam. Why didn't Acharyas or whoever composed Namo Aryantanam just say Namo? Aryantanam, Siddhanam, Ayaryanam, Uvachan, Namo, Lois of Sanam. Why is the reason of putting Namo, 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 Namo? Essentially, Namo has got profound essence. And even if you look at Namo Aryantanam, it starts with Namo and it even ends with Nam. Namo Arihanta, Nam. Namo Siddha, Nam. So it starts with num and, 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 and ends with num. If you look at, if you count the number of letters, it's 15% of Nokar Mantra is actually num, Namo. Just Namo again, if you just count the number of letters. Now, before surgery, if anyone wants to go for surgery, the sugar levels need to be appropriate before, uh, uh, before you have a, a surgery. So the doctors will make sure that sugar levels are low. Essentially, we, it, this Namo Thinam starts saying, if I want to start praising the, Lord's, uh, the virtues of my Lord, my ego levels actually have to come down. If I'm actually going to go and give my obeisance to Bhagwan, and if I'm going to go with a very superior heart, yes, I'm actually someone great, then that's not good. So Namothanam essentially is saying, let me get rid of my ego. Once when I get rid of my ego, the, the, my me level, oh, mu chokai, then I can actually imbibe the virtues of our of Tirthankas. So the essence of Namothanam essentially is saying, let me get rid of my ego, let me empty my vessel, totally vessel, and now I've got someone in front of me who has got far superior qualities, and then I actually want to get imbibe those qualities within me. So the essence is, let me get rid of my ego. So you can see how the essence of Namutranam is. All internet accounts require passwords. So password to meet the load is Namo. As you can see, Naukar Mantra in Namutranam, it's, it's a password. Just as gravitational force pulls everything down, similarly ego pulls the soul down. Ego is a very, very powerful uh, uh, thing. And even it says like we have this Gunastan, the stages of spiritual development. And ego is one of the last traces that even very spiritual elevated souls can, you could have traces of ego. Saying that, yes, I've got ego. So ego can really bring even great, great personalities down. So only after Namutharam does the praise of the Lord begin. Another example, beginning telephone code for all cities is zero. Most of the places when you start any telephone code is zero. Similarly, we need zeroness or emptiness before all praises to the Lord and inside and outside. So we actually need to empty ourselves. So just kept giving an analogy that before you start any dialing any number, it's like a zero and you start. Similarly, if I want to imbibe the virtues, I need to be zero. I need to be totally empty before I can. Now, let's look at Namuthunam. Now, let's look at these cars here. Which car is this, do you know? Right. Aston Martin. Aston. Okay, this is a palatial house. And this is some nice jewelry. Now, if you just take this, does it have any essence? These are just like objects. Now, which words, if you, which two letters we add to this will have profound essence? Which words, will you, if you can add in front of these two letters, will make a total different scenario? Sorry? No. No. My. 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 If you say, my Ashton Martin, my palatial house, my jewelry, can you imagine what, first of all, if you just added these two letters here, can you imagine, like, if I just add what, my, it's my car. So, if, first of all, I literally start feeling quite proud. I've actually got a very nice car here. And not only me, but even people outside will say, ah, it's my car, my Aston Martin uh, car is actually parked outside here. So, not only will I start feeling great, but even the, the, the uh, people around me will start feeling, it's, this is my house, and people say, ah, what a great house he's staying in, my jewelry. Just these two letters is changes the total scenario. Otherwise, these are just pure objects, nouns. It's, it's, a, it's a national cartoon. But these two letters, now it's linking me to these objects here. 
Now, it's, if I just said it's my car, my house, my jewelry. So essentially, if you just said, uh, Bhagwan has got these qualities, these qualities, these qualities, these are qualities, these are like adjectives or adverbs. How will I link myself to, to Bhagwan? Like, namo thunam, so namo. If I now start putting that namo to this, then I'm now linking myself to the prayer. Otherwise, there's pure objectives. It's like I could be an academic saying, ah, these are the good qualities of Shamini Jesus, are the good qualities of certain uh, people. So these are just pure things. But for me to link myself, get embedded within this prayer, it's Namut Thunam. Now I'm buying down, and once when I'm buying down, then those uh, the attributes can come to me. Otherwise, how will those attributes come, come within me? So the Namut Thunam is essentially the beginning. Now, so we have looked at the essence of Namur in uh, Namathuram. So the next word is Arihantanam. Now, Arihantanam, the difference between Aham and Arham, because Arham is very common. Like if you look at Shamanji's, most of the mantra jobs are with Arham. Aham means ego. And if you look at Arham, is Lord, Arham. And the difference is R. Now, uh, respect to Shamanji's are very good in this mantra shastra. So, and every single letter of this uh, has got certain powers. So if you look at it, then this is called the, the Bij Mantra. So if you look at V, so V is got the seed of wind or uh, or wind or air. So you look at even the, our words, Pavan, Van. So that's the Pavan, when you say wind, it's got the root of V. We say Vava Jodu, Vava Jodu means storm. So it's got V, it's, it's got a lot of air. If you look at uh, uh, Vava Jodu, we can say... Uh, hava. You say Hava? Hava, Hava. hava. So Ema Pan, Hava Ma Pan, it's yeah. V. So V has got that... The, the, the root is, a, is the air, the element of air you need it. R is known as the fire, is, is the root, root of fire. So essentially what it's saying is, if I actually uh, destroy my aham, then I actually become uh, uh, arham. So between arham, if I de destroy my ego, the ra, if I sort of burn my ego, then I can actually become the Lord. Now let's look at this. Who is Arihantanam? Who, who is an Arihant? This is a marble stone. Look at this sculptor here. Through his skill, he's actually going to be carving some beautiful, and, and then from this skill, he's actually going to make a murti out of this pure stone here. It is purely the skill of this particular uh, uh, sculptor to make this murti here. So essentially, who is an Arihan? An Arihan is a person who has got a soul like us. So there's no difference between this stone and any other stones here. So Arihan was a, a, human, a human being, just like you and me, with a soul. But through their own efforts, they managed to get rid of their karmas and they managed to get to this state here. So essentially, the whole process, the religion, the dharma, essentially is how can I get rid of this? So we all have got the possibility to carve out, get rid of all our negative So he's actually carved out all the things which are not required and make the nice murti here. But for us, we need to carve out all of our karmas, our negativities, and once when you carve this out, we can actually become the Arihan. So, Now, just we say that Ari, in fact, that's the next slide. So let's look at this next slide. <coughs> now, Ari Hantanam, the root of the word is Han. Han means to destroy. Now, that seems to be quite unusual that we are a, a Jain philosophy, Ahimsa is one of our core principles, and then to say that yes, the root of our word, Han, Han means to destroy. So, how can that be true? And it's quite even similar in other faiths, like say Jihad, like fight the war. But what fight is it really means external uh, fight and external? Essentially, it means no. I, Arihans are souls who have actually destroyed their inner enemies. All these kashais, krodh, man, maya, lo. So once when they've destroyed their inner enemies, then they've actually achieved the victory. Grammatically, arihantana means plural. So essentially, what it means is arihants are souls of the past, the present, and the future. Arihans are great souls who were ragi. Ragi are people with attachment and they became with the ragi, without any attachments. And from Atma to Paramatma, from Dhanav to Dev, and from Dev to Deva Dev, Deva to Dev. This is quite, uh, 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 quite an interesting concept. We would all imagine that suppose, even if you have our Guru Maharajis, suppose they pass away, then what do we say? That they've actually gone to Devlok. That's generally the perception because they've done such great deeds. Is that their ultimate objective that, oh, I really want to get into Devlok? That essentially is not the real objective. Yes, Devlok is a far superior abode than where we are right now. Much conducive environment, lots of powers, but essentially it's not the eventual abode which we are all aspiring for. We actually want to go transcend from Devadi, from Devlok to even the Siddha Shila. So that's our actually objective here. So essentially that's what you want to get there. Now, 
So when we say Arihantanam, they destroyed their enemies. So which are some of their uh, uh, enemies which they've destroyed? Indriya. Most of us, when we eat food, do we just really literally eat food for to satisfy our energy needs? Sometimes it's that concept of taste. Ah, this is very tasty. Even though it's detrimental to our health, we'll still be eating some food. So essentially that's a weakness of ours. So sense organs. We've got eyes to see, but many of the things, uh, youngsters and do we always use our eyes for the right thing? Many people use our uh, eyes to see, uh, to see wrong things. Kashais, sufferings, we have got Vedna, feelings and upsar, troubles. So these are, these are some of these external enemies which we want to avoid. Even in Vosakram Sotra, upsar ga dur hua. So like when you have Parswanath Bhagwan, a deluge of rain is falling on them, but they're actually above them. They, they, they've reached, their soul has reached to such a level that none of these external factors does affect them. So that's when they've, destroyed, they've overcome all this. Now can you imagine, just on Arihan Tanam, just Arihans, can you imagine how much qualities they have? Many of our sutras, our scriptures, are just focused on the qualities of Arihan. And, and it's just mind-boggling to see that you know, when we, when we say that our, our Jainism is a religion of, in a way, in, uh, infiniteness, it, it is quite true. Our Aryans have actually got infinite qualities. Atishais. It says that our Aryan Bhagwans have got 34 Atishais. Special qualities, special powers which our human brains cannot contemplate. Let's look, I mean, I won't go through all of them, but say for example right now, it is believed that if the Tirthankar Bhagwan is sitting here and if they are giving their Deshna, then even animals can understand them. Now, we will actually be surprised at how can that be possible? That understand. So they've got certain qualities, certain powers that because their soul has become purified, they have actually then attained their, 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 the soul has achieved such purity that they can actually have got some special uh, 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 supernatural powers which, which they get. When we recite the Bhaktamar Stotra, some of these attributes of Tirthanka Bhagwan are saying that they are actually sitting under a Sihasan, a throne. Uh, Dev Devis are actually throwing uh, uh, sort of uh, flowers from heaven towards them. Chatra Traya, there were three canopies signifying that they are masters of the three worlds. The, 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 uh, the, the, uh, uh, the hellish beings, the Madhya Lok and the Urdhva Lok, Dev Lok. So they are actually the masters of the three worlds. <coughs> there are 35 qualities of the Aryan speech. So just imagine that when Bhagwan is speaking, that there are all these uh, uh, qualities of Ary uh, uh, Aryan speech. It's fluent, uh, sweet. They don't have to repeat themselves. It's very crystal clear. Just a few words, will, will, you'll actually understand the entire essence of what they're trying to say. So they've got just, and we can see that even in leaders right now, that there could be some leaders who are very, very effective. When they speak uh, certain things, you'll say, oh, wow, what, what, a, what, a, what a great, great speech. That's actually a quality. Uh, so some people are born with that. That even right now we can see there could be many leaders, but some leaders, just when, when they speak, it's, it's, it's like absolutely very, very powerful and uh, a big, bigger speech. So we looked at Arihan. Now let's look at Bhagavantanam, the next word. The Namutthanam Arihantanam Bhagavantanam. Bhag. Bhag means Ashwari, wealth of prosperity. So one who has achieved Bhag is Bhagwan. They've achieved prosperity. Another word of Bhagwan means Bhai. Bhai means fear. So Bhai Ant, Bhagwan, Bhagwan. So Bhai ka Anthua, fear ka Anthua. Another one is Bhav. Ye mera Purva Bhav hai, ye Bhav hai. Next bhav. So, mera bhav ka antua. Reincarnation has been ended. So, essentially, that's kept in the essence of who our Tirthankars are. That they have now reduced their karmas and they have now become Bhagwan. So, so they have ended their, uh, the cycles of birth and death. So, some people you can impress others with their knowledge, look, speech, nature, etc. But Bhagwan, so the essence of Bhagwan is that they are about infinite infinite knowledge, infinite beauty, infinite punya, infinite energy, and infinite of infinite qualities. So that's actually a, 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 the essence of Bhagwan. Like someone can say, oh wow, he's a great orator. They've got great looks. Like when you say Ash Ashware. But Bhagwan is the ultimate of everything. Sarvottam, the best of the best. Beyond comparison. So now let's look at the next one. Namutthanam, Aryantanam, Bhagantanam, Aigaranam. Aikarana means the beginners. Adi. Adi means to begin. Adi ka, the starter. Now, we believe that uh, essentially Rushabdev was the first Tirthankar of our 24 Tirthankars. And as we all know that Rushabdev Bhagwan, 
that at that time in that period he uh, it's written in the scriptures asi masi krishi he started agriculture he started uh, sort of education fire how to do fire how to make cook, cook, uh, everything so he started everything but there's a very very big difference between what about the other tirthankars ajit nath bhagwan and all these other 24 tirthankars now the beauty of our tirthankars are that they are the ones like for us we if we embark on the path of spirituality is because we followed some scriptures we followed a gurus the uniqueness about our tirthankars are that they were free spirits free souls they said this is not the world is about they left their palaces and they went out to the forest and they realized the essence of religion by themselves so they were like the true beginners of religion so they understood the truth themselves and once when they got kevel gun then they preached to others so essentially they in a way were not following the what's been laid out by others they literally went out such truth for themselves and that's one of the big aphorisms of preksha meditation such truth for yourself and so and then so and because they started this so we say that whole oh lord when it comes in namutram you are the ones who started this religion you are the ones who then given the scriptures to us and the, the religion has followed as essentially because of your that's why the first uh, was known as adinath adinath yes adinath so adinath so rushab dev or adinath George Bernard Shaw in Jainism god is never a monopoly game gods in Jainism show you by way of scriptures how to become like them it's a very profound statement for example if i got certain knowledge i would like to keep it to myself i wouldn't want to share it with others and it's sometimes it's, it's even even if i want to i might not for example if in my corporate world right now if i really share with everyone else that someone else can take my position uh, right now so you always want to be a little bit more reticent that saying ah i don't want to share with others but the Thing with Arthita, or even if I got power, so, so many wages or battles are fought because of power. If I got the uh, seat of throne, and if someone else wants to take the power, would I want to re uh, readily give up my throne? No, I want to retain my power. I've got this position of power. So essentially, if we've got anything superior, it's a kind of a human psychology that I don't want to share it out with others. And that's why some of our souls are achieves uh, uh, and all they're very good because they've got this universal compassion. So if you look at a monopoly game what is the essence of monopoly game let me start uh, playing monopoly let me start getting houses from houses let me get uh, hotels and if i start getting all these things here my objective is to make you bankrupt so i want to become get all the money right now but essentially at the cost of you becoming bankrupt only if you become bankrupt because if i have got all these hotels you lend on my hotel i'll start getting so many of, of uh, how, how much money will i just take from you so essentially so that's essence of of the monopoly game but not in religion bhagwan says i have now destroyed my karmas I have now managed to get Kemal Khan. I have, I'm going to go to Sita Shila, but if I got that, you all can do that, and I want to show the paths to you. So they essentially are very, very open. They do not want to say, ah, I've actually managed to get to, to 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 get rid of my karmas, but that's that's my secret. You know, I'm, I'm not. I don't want to share. You guys can suffer. You can find out it for yourself. So that's really not the essence. The essence is how how can you do that? So, oh Lord, you started and completed a journey for self-realization, but let me start mine. Oh Lord, your past is my present. भगवान का पास्ट है ये हमारा प्रेजेंट है आई प्रे दैट योर प्रेजेंट बिकम्स माय फ्यूचर बिकॉज़ अभी भगवान कहां पे है सिद्धशिला में है सो so उसका जो प्रेजेंट है होपफुली दैट बिकम्स माय 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 फ्यूचर एंड दैट्स व्हाट वी आर प्रेइंग फॉर तिथयराणम दिस इज एक्चुअली अ नाइस टेंपल इन महाराष्ट्र इट्स एक्चुअली इन इन द इन द शेप ऑफ अ बोट एंड दैट्स व्हाट तीर्थ मींस what the tirtha means it's got lot of different connotations tirtha in a conventional sense means like a pilgrim place ye tirth tirtha sthan hai tirtha also means like a bridge or like a ford maker tirth or establish the fourfold sum now let's imagine that there is someone who is actually achieved self realization and then they destroy all the karmas they become kevali and they go to moksha so that's fine then you will have someone like say bhagwan mavir was here and then gautam swami was his disciple so gautam swami got the teachings from lord mahavir then he came a ganadhar he came like a, a, the head of of all the uh, the, the guru uh, he became the, the spiritual uh, head after lord mahavir and then gautam swami went to moksh but they are not tirthankars so what is so unique about adesh bhagwan and all these 24 tirthankars so if you have our tirthankars here they achieved self realization but then they had universal welfare they actually had this essence that okay, i have achieved this but i want everyone else actually to to also destroy their karmas and achieve perfection and they become tirthankars it's essentially even a, like a special naam karma tirthankar naam karma to uska hai so tirthankar and then they achieve moksha so essentially when we go to uh, temples rather than idol worship 
our Jainism is actually focused on ideal worship. We are actually going and worshiping, to, going and saying, okay, this is the idol, but essentially we want to get towards the ideal worship. So you have got all these great uh, uh, characteristics, but I want to actually imbibe those within myself. So Tirthankar is someone who has achieved, destroyed their karmas, and uh, they are the ones who are going to enable us, and, and their teachings will help us to, to, to achieve moksha. Sayam Sambuddhanam. What does it mean? So, in Acharam Sutra, they say, Asutta Muni, Sutta Amuni. Someone who is vigilant or alert and not sleeping is a Muni, and someone who is not vigilant and careless or sleeping is not a Muni. Now, Sayam Sambuddhanam. Let's look at if, the beauty of knowing Gujarati or Hindi, it's just amazing. Swayam Sambuddhanam. Swayam, Swa. The beginning is Swa. So, what does Swa mean? Self. And, and it's very important. The Swarup means mera, what is my Rup? Or Swarthi. Yes, Swarthi hai. So I'm looking at my own interest. So Swarup, Swarthi. That all essentially the Swa is all to do with me. And if you look at the opposite is Par. Par Lok. Par Stri. Or anything else. So it's, it's, it's other, other. So Swa. Ne, uh, so Swayam. So essentially means Sayam Sambuddhana. Bud means intellect or Buddhi. So, uh, Tirthankars are someone who achieved their intellect through their own efforts. Swayam, their own efforts they, through that. So, that's essentially what it means. That they destroyed their karmas, they, and because of that, they got the self-awakening, they got the Kevil Nan, and then they are imparting the knowledge to us. So, they received, received this through their, own, uh, through their own efforts. Swayam Sambuddhanam. There was no instrumental in motivating the Lord to take Diksha, follow the path of self restraint and achieve self-realization. There was no external factors, it was just themselves. Their inner voice, their conviction was the motivator for achieving Kevel Gnan. Now let's look at a story. Uh, to example this of the Swayam Samudhanam. So there was a king and he, there were a lot of prisoners. Uh, uh, in, uh, so he says like rather than uh, putting them, so let, let's do this. I'm going to take all these prisoners of mine and banish them into the jungle. So handcuffed all the prisoners and, and told them you are now going to go to, uh, to the jungle, ferocious animals and whatever fate meets you. That's, that's, your, that's your punishment. So as a king, that's what I'm trying to do. So they're banished to the jungle. They're all in ferocious animals here. Your hands are tied. There's nothing they can do. However, there was one person there who then said, ah, our hands are actually tied with handcuffs, but let me go near a stone. And through friction, he's just uh, rubbing the, the, the handcuffs and he actually frees himself. And once when he frees himself, he, then he, what, what he says is, ah, to the other prisoners, look, I managed to uh, find this out that by doing this, you can also free yourself from this. So he tells others, come here, there's a stone here, start rubbing your handcuffs and you can also free yourself. And so this kind of person can be called Swayam Samputtanam. He himself, through his own intuition, through his own previous past knowledge, managed to get this idea that yes, although I'm in a, in a grave situation right now, I can, I, I can this, and then once when he freed himself, he then actually helped others to free. And that's what our Tirthankars are, Swayam Samputtanam. They broke the shackles of karma, and now they are helping us to break our shackles of our karma. Puris Uttamanam. So again, if you look at uh, some lawyers, Purush. So Purush has got this connotation of male. And Uttam means best. Uttam Uttam best. So now we are saying Puris Uttam. Now, before we start, we have to start believing. Do you think our religion is really that kind of uh, sexist or oh, Purush, like it's all about male? It, because it's, it's, it starts with male. Now, let's look at our, our world. If you look at a group of teenagers right now, what they will say, hey guys, let's go out for a party. So initially, guys, if you ask a guy to a three-year-old, they'll say guys means cows. But eventually, if there's a group of teenagers, guys essentially meant boys. Hey, group of boys, let's go out. But eventually, that terminology is even extended to girls also. So if you even have a group of five, six girls, and if they want to go out, they'll say, hey guys, let's go out. So the term guys all, does not essentially mean that it's just to refer to male. It's essentially an all-encompassing saying it's male or female. So Purush essentially doesn't mean that, yes, you are the greatest amongst men. Essentially, you are the best amongst the humans. So Purush, although the, the, the word is there, but the connotation is much more broader. And then we say, our Lord is Purush Uttamanam. So when you look at a tree, we'll say, ah, what a magnificent tree. What beautiful flowers. But in a sense, beneath the tree, there's all these qualities here. So when we say about the Thankar, wow, what a great uh, our Lords are. 
sometimes it's the outward appearances. Oh, they've got this much power, our, our lords. But what is the essence? The root, the essence of the Tithankas are much more deeper. That they, these are the essence. And that's what you want to say. That's why you're saying you're Uttam. Not only just your outward appearance, and then just because you've got some supernatural powers, but in essence, that at the core of you, the, all the, the, the minor, uh, your emotions and everything are such so minute and such so great that that's the reason, the reason why you're worthy of adoration. Again, when we say humans have got this tendency of comparison, if you buy, bought something from Primark, uh, a store over here, then that's got less quality. But if you bought something from Hollister or uh, one of these others, then it's got, got slightly uh, 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 superior quality. Or if you ask some children, my mummy is the best, my daddy is the best. Or, and in America or in other places, there's this tendency of this is the largest bridge, this is the, st uh, this is the strongest uh, 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 bridge, this is the tallest building. So, Similarly, here we are trying to say that Puri Sutta Manam, amongst all the people here, oh Lord, you are the best. And you are giving that superlative uh, example that you are Puri Sutta. Um, in the interest of time, I will not uh, go through this slide here, but it's already, already say, uh, it's trying to suggest that what are the, some of those qualities which is making us feel that, like, oh Lord, you are, you are one of the best. You are benefactor to all, respectful for all. Puri Sutta Manam. So C has this connotation of lion, and as, as soon as you so like a picture is worth a thousand words. So if I saw a lion, the lion already gives you the image, the king of the jungle, absolutely brave, uh, uh, and and so that's one of the reasons why like we are comparing our lords to to the the, the the lion. Lion is never afraid. It's never afraid of calamities, problems, and always bears them without any assistance. And and therefore it's like. We are saying you are fearless, you are fearless like a lion among men. That our Lord, when they went into the jungle, they had no qualms. What will I, how will I survive? What will I do? They were literally brave souls. Uh, and, and indeed, even in this day and age, yes, many of our monks and nuns are, are literally, uh, uh, you know, they, they just literally uh, are the mercy of, of nature. When, when they want to do such tap and, and uh, many other things, they are literally brave souls that some of us can't even uh, understand or, or contemplate. So, amongst men, you are like a lotus. Lotus is a very uh, uh, beautiful flower and it's got a lot of analogies within the Jain scriptures and even the Buddhist scriptures. And in essence, why is lotus very, uh, very, very prominent? Because it signifies that lotus is in muddied water. Kada ke pani mein, a lotus is there. So, a beautiful flower, but right in the midst of very dirty, polluted water. And the lotus will never get tainted. So even if you put some water, uh, this muddy water, uh, uh, water over it, it will just come down. And the reason is because it's got a layer of oil uh, surrounding the flower. So that because there is an oil around the lotus flower, it's never, because as you know, if you had oil here and you put water, the water will just literally uh, seep through. So because it's got that layer of oil, in spite of being in this muddy water, it, remain, it retains its purity and its, 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 its beauty. So, it says, Lord, you are in the sansar, you are in the midst of all these problems over here, but you, you have purified yourself to such an extent that you are indeed like Purisvara Kundariyanam. And how is that? If you look at a cricket match right now, some of us, IPL is going to be starting in two weeks' time. And depending on which teams you are going to be supporting, if they made a six, they'll say, yes, my team made, uh, made the six, uh, short of six. But look at the umpire. Will the umpire ever start jumping up and down on the pitch saying, yes, great, this team has actually made a six. The umpire is always neutral. No matter which team makes the six or anything, he is there with neutrality, and that's where we are saying, Oh Lord, you are, you are Purush, you are almost like that umpire. You are observing all the things in, in, uh, in, in, in nature, but you are in, in, in state of absolute samta bhav. Look at us, yeah, we, in, we are staying in society, so much problems right now. Crime, you could have depression, and all these things within the, within the society, but within, and this is like a muddy water. And yet, in all these negativities, is, there are some beautiful rare uh, souls and gems which will outshine and they are very pure. So, Puri Svara Pundariyana. So, the next one is Puri Svara Gandha Hathinam. Now, Hindi proverb, Hathi chale bazaar, putte bhoke hazaar. In, in India, I mean, I think the time is running short, so I, will, uh, I might show a short clip. So there, an elephant going through the villages right now. 
That's actually my son, so we, we were actually uh, in, in, in uh, there. The village is uh, feeding him something, and then the elephant is blessing, blessing that the person. So he's going to the town, you give him some money, we give him some food to the uh, elephant, and then the elephant will start uh, uh, blessing you. So he goes to the, to the streets. And then just bless it, blesses them. <laughs> so what is this? An elephant is such a strong, mighty animal, but it's majestic, graceful. And a dog, very small, and what the dog does, barks, 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 so it's literally just literally barking, bark, barking, barking through. So our lords are majestic, are, are, are graceful. And if you even went to the Nishtan Mandir, so Mr. Mandir, if you look at the, uh, on the top, there are all these elephants. And sometimes once when you went there, we asked one of the sons, that why do you have actually elephants? He says elephants have, are signifying that all the temples in the past have been created because the elephants have been carrying all the wood and everything, and the temples have been built through the efforts of the, of the, of the elephant. And even same in the, in the Jain temples, if you look at Delvara and all this, they're on the high top mountains, the elephants have carried all these things and the tem uh, temples have been built uh, through their uh, efforts. Ganda Hatinam, in scripture it says that there is that elephant which has got Ganda Hattinam. So it's got a very nice smell coming through. So there's some mythological uh, 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 elephant in the, in the, maybe in the past, which was obviously majestic, but even the smell coming out of the elephant was just absolutely ar aromatic. So it's that kind of attractive personality, like very majestic, very, and so, oh Lord, comparing yourself, you are majestic, you are great. And, and, and even just the presence, so like if you have some very spiritual leader, uh, people around here, if they do nothing, you feel attracted and sitting next to them. Just the, the aroma and then the personality is, is, is like you actually want to uh, attract. Even in Bali Tana, one of the poles is called Hathini pole. So one of the gates is actually called Hathini pole. Oops. So now, all these words were like Purush, 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 Purush. So we are saying that the Lord was the best amongst the humans, the, the human species here. So now the next few words are going from, not from Purush, it's going now from Purush to Lok. Lok, and we'll see now the next objectives. Even if you look at the Jain universe, it's in the shape of, of, of a kind of, uh, of, a, of a human body. And so we are now saying that from the Purush, we are saying that you were the, and Purush, and we are, when we say in the Jain cosmology, we are in the Madhya Lok, we are in the middle part of the universe here. So we are saying that, okay, so you were Purisuttamanam, Purisasihanam, Purisvarpundariyam. You are the best amongst these people in this Purush, in the middle world here. But now we are going from this Purush to Lok. We are going from the entire Lok, the, the bottom part, the middle and the heavenly angels. So now the whole focus and essence is now changing from Purush to Lok. Lokuttamanam. So Lok Uttam. So the first one was Purisuttamanam. So you are the best amongst the Purush, but now note that now you are the Loguttamanam. So in the entire Lok, you are the Uttam, you are the best. And essentially, uh, you know, we have got people, and you can have within our society, you can have people who are extremely wild, extremely cruel, and you can then go to absolute gems. And and obviously, sometimes when you say who who is worthy of your adoration, so people will say, Oh, Bill Gates, I really want to aspire to become like Bill Gates. I want to become like Ambani, the wealth. Uh, you can want to become like some actors and actresses and the focus of us in through spirituality is to is to change the balance and there's Hasubai and myself with Acharya Mahashraman when we were there so our, 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 our essence is essentially to focus our uh, our, uh, our liking and then people who inspire us from here towards this that how can we get this inspiration from spiritual spiritual people even if you look at Uttam if you look at this Bahubali Murti this person is actually blocking the view but what you have here is a tiger and uh, a, uh, a cow, both drinking milk from the same pot. So when the Lord has become Uttam, the best, then there is no, no fear. Essentially they are drinking milk from the same bowl. And that's signifying that what compassion the Lord has. Logan Nahanam. So Lokta Nath Nath. We are bound down to the Lord of the three, three worlds. There is a beautiful story of Srinik Maharaj, and again, in the interest of time, I will not uh, 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 narrate the story. But in essence, what happened to Srinik Maharaj, he then realized that he was under the illusion that I've got all this wealth here. His mother gave him a very protected and sheltered life. And Srinik Maharaj then, when, then, and when people from Nepal came to sell some very expensive uh, blankets, 
uh, no one could in the kingdom could buy, not even uh, Shrini Maharaj could, could, could buy uh, the, the blankets, but Charlie Brothers' mom could just say, oh yeah, that's petty cash for me, let me just buy these blankets, and then use those blankets as bathroom mats, literally to provide that. And then when the King Shrini found out that who is this family that they, first of all, no one can buy these things, and even after you buying these things, they are actually using this as like bathroom mats, like which is this family? So the King says, I want to actually come and see this family here. So now, Charlie Brothers' mom is actually getting a little bit uh, concerned that telling his son that, ah, the king is actually come to meet you. And Shari Bhattar says, king, mera hai. there's someone above me. I was, I thought there's no one uh, uh, above my head. I thought I was the absolute. And the mom then says, no, 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 son, you've never known that there's actually a king in this kingdom here. Yeah? And he's actually coming here. So please do come back from, from your, uh, where you're staying from your, from your story. You'll have to come down and, and greet the king. And that's when he realized, ah, mera naat hai. I cannot have uh, 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 someone naat above my head. And through this uh, inspiration, he says, no. I will not accept him as my leader. If I want to have a nath, he then takes, takes diksha and then takes the shelter of, of, of uh, and, and then this. So that was his trigger. So saying, ah, mera koi nath hai, ah, mera koi nath niche. If I want the nath, I want to have a spiritual nath. So that was the trigger. So, lok ka nath hai. So when you sing, hey, hey, oh Lord, ab, ab lok ka nath hai. Lok ka hi aana. Lok ka hit karna hai. So, benefactor. Ke, uh, so they have good compassion for the entire lok. Lok ka hit. Um, in essence, um, you know, apra, in our scriptures we say, apra sat lakh kare che. so even in our prayers we say, sat lakh prutvi ka hai, sat lakh ab ka hai, sat lakh teo ka hai. If I have done any harm towards one sense beings, two sense beings, three sense beings, four sense beings, so through their teachings, we have got the hit, we actually want to, we are concerned about the entire, and that's one of the reasons why Jainism is supposed to be kind of very, one of the uh, environmental uh, friendly religions, because we have got concern for all living beings, right from microscopic one sense beings to the five sense beings. Did Lord Marvin ever cry in his life? Once. Just once. And there was, he only cried once, Sangam Dev was giving him lots of tortures, and after six months of torture, Sangam Dev himself became tired and decided like that's it. I can't give any more. This, this person is very, very calm, stable. I cannot give any, any, uh, you know, he's not infected. After six months, he decides to go back to his uh, Devlok and Bhagavan Mahavir through his knowledge says, I actually feel sorry for him because he's committed such great karmas. For me, it's not affected me. But he's committed such great that when he goes back to Devlok, other Devs will actually start harassing him and, and, and punishing him. Why did he do this? And, and, and just feeling very, very sorry for him. Tears uh, roll down his eyes. Loga pai vanam. Pai means like a lamp in the universe. You are a fountain of knowledge. So, uh, again, Lord's website is, uh, this is kind of a joke, it's not quite true, but for us, our Lord has got Kevalinan, and that's why we have got utmost faith in, in, in the Lord's uh, uh, teachings. <coughs> okay, Logo, Loga pai vanam. Illuminators in the universe. So let me give a quick. Uh, anyone says, what's uh, Narendra Modi's formula? It plus it is equal to it. Anyone can know what does this it mean? It plus it is equal to it. Okay. Income tax. Okay. Income tax now. <laughs> Information technology <laughs> plus Indian talent oh. is equal to India tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's his formula. Information technology plus Indian talent is equal to India tomorrow. So that's Narendra Modi's formula. Now, how does it relate to us? Indian, Indian uh, information technology. Our Bhagwan has got infinite knowledge. So he's in IT for us, he's like Google for us. No matter, our, our Lord has got absolute knowledge, infinite knowledge, our Sastra, everything is there. That's information technology. Indian talent. Indian talent is Guru Gautam Swami. So his disciple is that Indian talent. So Bhagwan Mahavi gave all the preachings, Gautam Swami and all the other Ganadas compiled. Uh, all these teachings, put them into our Agams, our Shastras, and India tomorrow is what we are right now. And not even now, but even for future generations, these Agams which are coming to us is because of this. So combination of information technology, uh, Lord Mahavir, uh, Indian talent which is the Ganadas, our Acharyas, all this knowledge is then coming, and then it's equal to India tomorrow, which means that religion is going to is there right now and is going to uh, uh, progress in, into the future. Other uh, example is in electricity, you can have different sources of electricity. You can have nuclear power, you can have wind energy, you can have uh, uh, hydroelectric power. But in essence, without the sun, you cannot have anything. If there was just no sun, none of these other energies can, you know, it's going to be effective. So essentially, solar power is essentially the, the essence. Again, in the interest of time, we don't have, but 
it is believed that Lord Mahavir just gave three words to his Ganadars, Upne Eva, Vigne Eva, Nidhu Eva. He just said, recited those three words to his Gautam Swami, and based on these three words, they contemplated on, on this, and all of our agams are based out of just three days, these three words. Can you imagine how much knowledge they must have processed, thought, thought and thought about it, and just out of these three words, just three core, so can you imagine the illuminators, that how much wealth of knowledge is there in just <coughs> a, even in small essence, we can, our, our agams are based out of these three. Abhay Dayanam. Again, Abhay Dayanam. So Abhay means fearlessness and you are, you are a provider of fearlessness. Fear could be of many things, illness. Now let's take an example. There was a king and he told his farmers, for one month, I'm going to give you as much grass as you want, as much food as you want, and you feed your uh, uh, goat as much as you want. And after one month, I want to see that which, which uh, uh, goat has not gained weight. But don't worry about any food. I'll be giving, providing you everything possible. But I want to see, come back after one month, and you, what's going to be unique to see, is there going to be any single farmer who will then say that my goat has not increased, in, my weight of my goat has not increased. And after one month, uh, uh, one person did come and saying, look, weigh my goat, and the weight did not increase. And the king was a bit surprised that in spite of giving all these things, how come you, uh, uh, this, uh, what did he do to, to this goat? Why did the weight not increase? And he says, uh, oh king, what I did was, there was all this food here, but just next to the uh, uh, grass and everything, I kept one stick next to it. So the goat was always looking at that stick and fearing that this stick is, I'm going to be hit with this stick. Out of that fear, the, the, because the, the grass was there, but the fear was much more that I'm going to be hit with this stick here, so the goat's weight did not increase. So the, essentially that's what it means, that fear can actually eat us right now. So even in, right now we all know that in, 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 in fear, we, we, we really can't, we can't, can't function. Fear is like zero. Multiply any number by zero and you get something. No matter how much money you've got, how much numbers you've got, you put a zero and you multiply zero by any number, you always get a zero. So no matter what we have, you might have all the wealth, you might have everything, but if you have got fear of something, then everything is, is nullified, everything becomes zero. So how does Lord make us fearless? Again, universal welfare. So it is said that many times our uh, uh, acharyas and gurus, they go to the jungles. And they go and, and meditate. So it makes us wonder, aren't they afraid of snakes and lions? Um, and, and, uh, and, um, and, and the essence is that how, how do they actually survive that? What's the mentality? And one of the reasons could be they have got such a strong conviction of universal welfare. And secondly, also they believe, Mene kuch apka harm ni kiya, to you are not going to do any harm to me. So if I have not done any harm towards this lion or the snake here, the snake has got no power or the lion has got no power to harm me. So it's that compassion that uh, that I, I've got no harm towards you, but even in, because I've got no harm towards you, or no ill feelings towards you, the other person will have no ill feelings towards me. Obviously, there could be some karmic effect in the past, which there could bear consequences, but their conviction is so strong that they have got this no fear. Okay, Nothing in this world is going to affect me, because if I've done something wrong, then only something has affected me, otherwise there's no other power in the world which can affect me. And it's that fearlessness which then they, they, they want to pass on to everyone. Okay, as I said, yeah, that's the same picture here. And that's that fearlessness. Under the Bahubalika Murtya in Maharashtra state, and again, as you can see, that they're all drinking. So under, under this, both the, the tiger and the cow have got no fear. I'm under the shelter of the Lord. Chakhu <coughs> Dayanam. Chakhu means, I can say eyes. And it's very, again, it's, if you know Hindi or Gujarati, Chakshu, Chashma. It all to, to do with eyes. So essentially it means, so the connotation is outer vision. But the whole essence of Chakku Dayanam means inner vision. When will I see and perceive uh, 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 and, and with some exertion? The essence of Preksha meditation, which uh, Dinesh just uh, did uh, before we started this, Pra Iksha, Preksha, Pra Iksha. Pra means profound and Iksha means to see, to perceive. Preksha, that's what Preksha means. And see does not mean external vision and careful concentration on subtle consciousness by mental insight. It's very important, uh, this. So when I actually go to work and when I'm traveling the tube, many times I see many of the ladies, they take up their makeup set and they're literally uh, doing their makeup on, on, on the tube with just before going to work. So essentially, they're looking at themselves and they want to be uh, beautify their body. If you look at our gurus, what they tend to do, again, they'll be sitting there or uh, in the train very quietly and they are literally closing their eyes. So they don't have a mirror to look at themselves. They're closing their eyes, but they're looking at them internally and they want to purify their internal. emotions, how can I purify myself? So the whole idea is, how can I focus away? 
away from the body, then I, how can I start focusing towards the soul? Magga uh, Dayanam. Five, ten minutes, is it okay? Or, yeah? If you want to leave, then please, yeah, feel free. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Magga uh, Dayanam. Magga means mark and, and, and the path. Now, again, look at the sequence of this. Before Magga Dayanam were two words. Abhay Dayanam. And then and then uh, uh, and then mark. Uh, mark. If, if if you imagine someone in the NASA wants to go to Mars, so before you want to go to embark on a journey to Mars, first of all you have to have fearlessness. Okay, who who from this crowd here wants to go to Mars? So if you volunteer, first of all you need to have no fear. Yes. If I've got no fear, then only I can I can uh, enroll myself to on a mission to Mars. Once when I when I have got a uh, bhaydiyanam, then then what do you say? Chakudiyanam. Okay, now how will I go? What's the route? What's the path? How is this? How are we going to go from here to, to, to Mars? What's going to be the path? The journey, because you're going to be going there. So it's even this is strategically placed. So once when you got fearlessness, then you got the uh, what you can see. How are we going to go there? And then you got the path. Oh Lord, you are now showing us the the path. Show me the path to salvation. Sharana Dayanam. So. Even when you recite the, the Manglik, Chattari Sharanam, Aryante Sharanam, Sharanam means you are provider of protection. So you are the ones who provide. Nothing else can provide this protection to me. When you are a child, we think, ah, my parents are providing protection to me. When you are married, you think my spouses are providing protection to one another. You go to the doctor, doctor, you, oh, doctor is going to provide protection to me. I've, I've, got, I've got illnesses, doctor. Lawyer, uh, if you are a lawyer in the court of law, the lawyer is going to provide protection towards you. But, oh Lord, you are the protector of cycle of birth and death. You are my ultimate protector. These are all temporary, but these are my ultimate uh, protector. Tui mata, tui pita. Oh Lord, you are giving them things. Sharon, you are everything to me. And a very simple example here. This lady is, is grinding and the seeds inside here are going to get totally crushed. Can you imagine if there are some seeds, some seeds right on the top here. And if she's turning, those seeds, are they ever going to get crushed? They're literally bopping up and down, but they're just on the top here because the, uh, she's rotating it. So, hey Bhagwan, Aapka Sharan Milta hai, with this stick, then I will not get crushed. I'll just revolve all around you here. I will not fall inside this hole and get crushed. So Bhagwan ka jab Sharan Milta hai, then those seeds, even though she's turning her up and down, those seeds will just go, keep on going up and down, but they will not get crushed because they're just around, around that, uh, the, the, the spindle. Bohi Dayanam. So, Bohi means uh, Buddhi and you are a provider of in intellect. Uh, again, Raja Kumar Pal, we are doing the work of the Aarti Raja Kumar Pal. Oh Lord, if I have the choice between the sovereignty of the entire universe at the expense of your religion, being a pauper or being a pauper with your devotion deep down in my heart, I would choose. And Kumar Pal says, I would, I don't, I'll relinquish my entire empire. I don't mean be, be, mind being a poor, but I, I would like to get your sh sh shelter. Again, what is the most generic blessings many Jain saints give? Dharma love. So when you're going to go for uh, uh, Ashivad, then they say Dharma Lab. So they're not saying, okay, may you get the right intellect, may you prosper. Dhamma Dayanam. Dharma Dayanam. Dharma to mila hai, humko, but Dharma, and then with this eyes, then how can we actually imbibe them in ourselves? So Dharma essentially has got lots of different meanings. Dharma means religion, Dharma means true nature of anything. Pani ka dharma kya hai? Pani shant hai. Fire ka dharma kya hai? Fire is, fire is to burn. So dharma means the true nature of anything. <coughs> dharma desha yanam. Bhagavan deshna dite hai. So again, uh, Bhagavan ki deshna. And again, what it means is, Oh, oh Bhagavan, ye mera hardware hai. This is my like human body, which is the hardware. But it's through your preachings, which is the software, which is actually going to make me the art of living. Aapka deshna se, I will be able to uh, uh, get rid of my uh, my karmas and, and elevate myself spiritually. So essentially, the deshnas are very important. Bhagwan ki speech. Dhamma Nayak Ganam. Again, Narendra Modi, an able leader, then you have a stable government. So for us, hey Prabhu, Dharma Nayak Ganam, you are leaders of the religion. Hamara jab Tirthankar Bhagwan hai, are absolutely stable hai, Amko uska full, full faith hai, then there is no problems. We have got no, no issues in, in, in life. Lord, and that's the reason why when we even he said Osakram Sutra, we sing Bhave Bhave Pasajina Chanda. We are saying that, oh Lord, once when I've got full faith in you, okay, you are now the I've got such firm conviction that now, not only in this life here, but in, for all future lives, may I still 
get this because now I've, I've found the true path and I really want you as my leader for all my other future lives until I get uh, 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 liberation. Again, another example. Amongst all the stones here, oh Lord, we've now been so fortunate enough to find a diamond. So your, 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 your true words. Dhammasara Hinam. Dharma ka sar means sarthi. And if you look at this, sarthi ka two meanings hai. When you have someone who is a charioter, to control the horse, ashram. So what it means is, we want to control our karmas, ashram and samvar. We want to control our karmas. And then sometimes you, when you want the horse to go forward, you let loose. Then keep moving the chariot, nirjara. Hamka karma ka nirjara karne ka hai. So that's kind of the example here. Um, again, uh, I visited, this is like, the classic example is that Bhagwan ke sarthi bolta hai, charioter hai. A very classic example is that Chanda Koshik snake tha, Lord actually went to Chanda Koshik's snake. Chanda Koshik's snake did not go to Bhagwan Mahavir and say, please redeem me. Bhagwan Mahavir actually was walking through the forest. People told him, that if you go to that snake, it's a very venomous uh, snake. Do not go there. Uh, the snake will actually, uh, is very harmful and you, everyone who's go, gone to the forest are, is getting killed. But Bhagwan says, no. He goes out of his own willingness and saying, no, mere ko And what does Bhagwan Mahavir, uh, when he sees this snake, says, buj, 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 and says, yeah, buj. So like essentially awaken, think, contemplate. Why are you having all this anger here? And in fact, I actually went to the same location like in Tirtha. I'll just show a quick movie. This is Nandiya Tirth. So this is the actual same location where uh, actually Chanda Koshik snake. So you can see this is the exact location Bhagwan Mahavir was standing and this is where Chanda Koshik snake was there. So this is the Tirtha in Rajasthan, Nandiya Tirth. And, uh, uh, and it's quite amazing to see that the same They've actually said that this is where the snake was, Chanda Koshik snake was, and here Bhagavan Mahavir ki murti hai, Nandiya Tirth hai. And so th this is the temples. So all, all what you're trying to say is, oh Lord, you are like my, my sati, you are my charioter. <coughs> jab aapko spirit, so the essence means, jab aapko spirituality chahiye, Lord, you, you will come to us. Another classic example is, look at this, how uh, lucky we are, this country. Uh, if someone came in this country, in the UK, 60, 70, 80 years ago, did we actually have any spirituality here? No. People, there was no essence, people actually struggled, people even started resorting to eating non-veg food here because there was a, a problem here in, in those 70, 80 years ago. Can you even imagine right now that we are now so blessed to have Shamdijis over here? Who could have contemplated to have Jain nuns after 50, 60 years in our midst here? If we wanted to have Jain saints, we had to go to India. But now we are so fortunate enough that for us, for our future generations, that we've got a center like this, and then we've got Shamnijis who are Jain saints, uh, uh, and, and they are going to be imparting this player. So, jab amka karma hai, we don't have to work effort. Amki automatically aage abhi. Like, so we didn't have to do any extra effort, but now Shamnijis are in our midst here. So, Brahma Sara Hinam, amko just charioter chahiye, to charioter is now with, 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 within us. Dhamma Varak Chaurandha Chakabartinam. Chakravati is a concept in uh, Jain philosophy. Chakravati means Chakravati. Chakravati means absolute emperors. So there were certain Chakravatis who were like supposed to have, uh, uh, they conquered all the s regions of land and they become the universal moka, almost like Napoleon. So we are saying, oh Lord, you are the Chakravati of the religion. Or Dhamma Vara Chauranta. Char Ant. So that, what does the word mean? Char Ant. Char Ant means you have broken this concept of. Uh, Reincarnation in uh, hellish beings, human beings, devlok, and uh, plant and animal kingdom. So, so all these char hamari gati hai, ye char gati ka aapka ant kiya, aur aapka abhi chakravati ho gaya. Dhamma var cha avaranta chakravati nam. Appadi varan anam dhansar dharan anam. What does that mean? Appadi uh, varan anam, you are holders of indestructible best knowledge and darshan and faith. Uh, again, I'll just... Vyata chau maanam. So again, that means divide of incompleteness, imperfect knowledge. Uh, you, you do not have any of these imperfections here. Imperfections of health, knowledge, youth, respect. You are absolute. You are, 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 comes? It comes on what? Chad, chadmast. And what does chadmast mean? Chadmast, we are all chadmast. Chadmast means wavering. We, 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 are, we are not stable. Even Lord Bhagwan, when he was born, right from his birth until he took diksha, there were still some flows. Bhagwan had not got Kevel done. So no matter who the person is, we, our, our gurus, we are all chadmas. Essentially because we are not yet reached the ultimate level of perfection. 
So until you do not have that thermal, there must be some minor flows in all of us here. But only after you have removed this karmic and you got kevel gnan and you then go into sitchila, that's the time. So not even before sitchila, after you got kevel gnan, you have now removed old karmic baggage and now you, you, you are not thadmast anymore. So I think we are just finishing. Jinanam, Jabayanam, Tinnanam, Daryanam, Buddhanam, Boyanam, Uttanam, Moganam. What it seems is, Jinanam, you became victorious and then you are making others victorious. Tinnanam, Daryanam, Tinnanam means star. You swam across the uh, this uh, sansar. You swam across it, so you, you first did it yourself. And after you did it yourself, you are now helping us to swim across this sansar, cycle of birth and death. Buddhanam, Bohayanam, you first got the intellect. You refined your to the state that you got kevel gnan and now you are helping us to get to that state. Muttana Mogana. Muttana means you got your mark first and then you are helping us to get the mark. Sabarunam Savadarisinam. You are knowers of everything and of uh, 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 and, and darshan. Siva Maila Moro Mananta Makai Mahaba Papuna Visitika Nam Dem Haram Sampatam Namojan. I'll just take a little bit of explanation. This is quite interesting to understand here. That these are all these adjectives describing the Lord. Sh Shiva, Mayala, Maruva, Mananta. But if you actually look at how the words are, Shiva, Mayala. So if you went into the Sanskrit dictionary, we will actually find Mayal. Mayal is not actually a word. If you look at English grammar, you have got monkey and then the plural is monkeys. But if you have money, then the plural is not is monies. I-E-S. It's not M-O-N-E-Y-S. Monies. And so therefore there are certain nuances of the English grammar which says that yeah, this is the rules of, of English language. Similarly in, 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 in Sanskrit, I'm not an expert, but from what I've read, when you put different Shiva, Achal, if you want to join these two words together, this ends in A, this begins with A, so the rule or the grammar of Sanskrit will mean that you cannot have Shiva, Achal. So to join these two words, let's put an M here, so Shiva, Mayala, ma, because Achala. So it ends in A and it begins with A. So because some, one word is ending in A and other one is beginning in A, you are actually using that M as a joining word. So that's the reason why it says Shiva, Mayala, Maruva, Mananta. All of them begin with the letter Ma. Maruva, Mananta. But they are, they are, if you went in the dictionary, you will not find the word. What is Manant? There is no word as Manant. So what is Anant? That M is just the joining between the Maruya and Mananta. So that's kind of the joining word. And all these words, Shiva, Mayala, Shiva means no karma, Achal. Uska mind for chanchal hai. Chanchal means wavering. So uska opposite hai achal, no instability. Shiva Maira Maruva, no body, no diseases. Aru. Anam, infinite, akshay. Avyabad, free from problems, disturbance. Apuna Raviti, a point of no return. You have now reached Siddhashila, from which you are not going to return back to earth. Namo Jinam Jiya Bayanam. So now we are saying, Oh Lord, I am bowing down to you. And, uh, uh, and who, has, who has conquered the so this is the last one saying all the Siddha Bhagavans of the past Bhavisanti Bhavisha means future all the Siddha Bhagavans of the future Sampai Vartamana all the Siddhas of the present moment Sabve Tivya Namandami to all the all of them I am bound down with profound essence again what I am trying to say here is that this small action we are acting very locally but uska profound kitna hai I am buying down to all the Siddha Bhagavans of the past, the present, the future. The simple veneration of us right now has got a huge, magnificent impact. Okay, so, oh, and I'm so, so sorry for uh, running over. So, hope you all uh, understood and enjoyed. Yeah, oh, Maram. Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Oh, it is very informative and uh, very detailed. Yeah, yeah thank you. <laughs> Can we have this presentation? Also? <laughs> <laughs> I go down to Joe Istatankar, Acharya Masham, brothers and sister. First of all, it was quite inspiring and uh, detailed work, which uh, which I was really impressed. Rajiv Thank you, Omar. 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 Thank you Dinesh Bhai, as well for lovely meditation. And uh, quite quite interesting. And uh, I didn't know what Namutana means, and it was an eye opener for me. Well, and I hope you all guys get to enjoy. Thank you, Rabbi Rajiv. Some information we have got this Shibir. So, those who have not registered, please register so that we know the numbers in the coaches. And uh, once he has arranged this uh, hotel, uh, 
near the center so if anybody wants to book the cutoff date is 20th after that uh, you'll have to stay in the in the center where it's a basic accommodation Omar. Omar. thank you thank you Rajiv. Well, Nice to present the pictures and everything. Like you said, no more password. The zero in your cell. The best is the IT. Yeah, we never knew that. It's not going to be a good two. I think you just try to just pass the masters. That's right. Thank you. Create this yourself. Excellent.